This is Richard Wolf with another response to an Ask Prof. Wolf question from our valued Patreon community. This one comes from Nicholas Richard Thompson, and he asks about Cooperation Jackson, the cooperation effort in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, that I have discussed on my programs with Kali Akuno, one of the organizers of it. Uh, it represents a recognition that the economic development that has been so spotty, so unjust, so neglectful of many parts of both white and black America, that it has provoked a desire to achieve economic development not on the basis of profit-driven capitalist corporations, but instead as a cooperative effort in which worker co-ops take a leading role and position. And what has been begun in Jackson, Mississippi, by its African-American community, has been picked up in other parts of the country as a model. One of which, if you are interested, you might want to pursue learning about, is on the north coast of California in Humboldt County, and it's called, fittingly, Cooperation Humboldt. And I urge you to look into it if you are interested. Here's the basic idea. All kinds of things that can't be done in capitalism can be done if you substitute a worker co-op based economic system. In other words, if you organize the production of goods and services in a cooperative, democratic way, such that each workplace, each enterprise is run by a consensus, a vote if necessary, in which the majority rules. All the people working in a particular workplace get together discuss, teach each other the different aspects of the work, debate alternative decisions, and then decide democratically. One person, one vote. What will be produced at that workplace? What technology will be used at that workplace? Where the workplace will be located? And what will be done with the output? And if it output is sold, well, then what will be done with the revenue that you get from selling the output? Those decisions are made democratically. And before I go back and talk a bit about where that leads, let me address a concern you might have. Critics of worker co-ops, enemies of worker co-ops, like to suggest that this couldn't possibly work you need people to run an enterprise. There has to be a hierarchy in which there's a boss, and the boss is always the boss, and the rest of us do what the boss tells us, and all the rest of that. And I want to remind everyone that those arguments were used to support, in the past, kings and emperors and czars and all of that kind of business. And we had it with that. We, the human race, got rid of kings and queens and emperors and czars. The few that remain are figureheads, like the Queen of England and so on, with no real power, uh, even if they are a costly uh, adornment in those societies. We believe instead that, yeah, everybody should have an equal vote, and yeah, we should debate issues and then vote for one or another direction. Is it messy? Yeah. Is it sometimes inefficient? You bet. And we love it. And we don't want to give it up. And we're not going back to kings anytime soon, as you can see if you look at world history. So here's the point of worker co-ops. We want to bring democracy to the workplace, where it should have been instituted long ago. In fact, if you're a country that boasts you're democratic 
as we here in the United States like to do. It's kind of strange that we haven't allowed democracy into the workplace in this country, ever. The overwhelming majority of businesses have been and continue to be undemocratic. When you cross the threshold into your job, in the factory, in the office, in the store, you give up democracy. There's a boss there you didn't elect who tells you what to do, where to stand, where to sit, what machine to work on, how long to work, etc., etc. And if you don't like it and complain, that person has the right to deprive you of your job, your income, throwing your entire family into chaos and difficulty. That's not a democratic system. You have no power over the people who have a total power over you. And what about this workplace? Well, it's the place most adults spend most of their adult life. Five out of seven days, the best hours of the day, you're in the workplace. That's right. So if you believe in democracy, it's long overdue to replace the undemocratic, top-down, hierarchical enterprises we take for granted with the worker co-ops, which are being looked at very seriously in Cooperation Jackson, Mississippi, Cooperation Humboldt, California, and other places that are similarly focused that way. And those kinds of institutions have existed, and I mean by that worker co-ops, in the United States in many places other than these famous Cooperation Jackson, Cooperation Humboldt. Many industries, many stores have worker co-ops, both in the United States and in the rest of the world. Surely they have a hard time in many places because this is a capitalist system and they are different. They are departing. They contain implicitly or explicitly a criticism of the capitalist alternative just as I've articulated one right now. And so, yeah, they're discriminated against because they're different, because they threaten that if you let them really become part of the economy, that we, the people, will choose more of them and less of capitalism. Let me illustrate. If you had a choice between working in a top-down hierarchical job where you have no power over those who have total power over you and you could choose not to do that you could instead go and work in a factory an office or a store that was organized differently like a worker co-op where you had the power together with every other worker and equal to that of every other worker to decide what happens and no other individual would have the power to fire you. That would have to be a collective decision too. Which one might you choose exactly? If you hesitated even a moment, that's what the capitalist system is fearful you might do if they allowed a worker co-op sector to emerge so they fight it. But that fight will be a losing fight. You know why I'm confident? Slavery once existed everywhere and people thought it would last forever. It didn't. Feudalism once existed nearly everywhere and the people who loved it celebrated it and thought it would last forever. It didn't. Capitalism has the same, yeah, 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 same outcome. It won't. And what will replace it? My guess is Cooperation in Jackson, Cooperation Humboldt, and the other worker co-ops are pointing for us a new direction for a better system than the one we live in now. Thank you for your attention, especially those of you in the Patreon community. And let me thank you for your support and let you and everyone else know that that support is what enables us to produce these videos and send them out to help shape the conversation in the United States, which in the end will determine its future.